Hello, this is Christy Zawadniak with Cottage Grove Quilt Company. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to finish our series on binding. So we've talked about how to trim your quilt. We have talked about how to add binding to your quilt. And now we're gonna finish it off with how you finish your binding. So where we left off last time is we got the binding sewn onto the top. So now the next step is to finish it onto the back. There's a couple ways you can do this. One is you can do it on your machine. Now there's a couple of ways I do this on my machine. You can get your pen out. We all have lots of pens. And you're going to come through your binding here, right where your seam is. And you're gonna poke it through and come back up and come. make sure you come back and you hit this ditch, okay? And you go around and you basically pin your entire quilt tip of pin to the tip of the head of the quilt, okay? And you make sure that on the back you catch it and you've got a consistent length. Okay, and as you can see, this is what I'm doing. I'm going head to tail, basically, on these pins, okay? And I'm going through and I'm looking at the back to make sure I've got the same width of a back along it. Now, you're gonna go through and you're gonna do this to your entire quilt. So, you know, if you've got a 108 by 108 quilt, that's a lot of pins and a lot of pinning. But what'll happen is as you are, you are stitching, these pins keep your edge secure and your back secure and it allows you to stitch all the way through by stitching in the ditch. Many of our machines have a stitch in the ditch foot that we can use for this or an open toe foot that way we can see the, the ditch that we're trying to sew into. So another option besides pinning is you can use um, a product called Steam Seam 2. Steam Seam 2 is a fusible web and so basically this comes in a quarter inch roll so you get I believe it's a hundred yards you know 40 yards uh, of double stick fusible tape a quarter inch yard a quarter inch wide and you can buy this um, at Amazon at your local quilt shop and as you can see it comes apart so it's double sided. So what you'll do is keep the paper on top and you lay it on your seam of your quilt that we did that was quarter of an inch, put that right in the seam and press it and then pull that up and then press this back to it and then that will help secure it. Um, I do use this a lot, especially on quilts that I know that are gonna be laundered heavily or played with heavily by children. Um, the only issue with using this product is that um, sometimes it is hard to be sure you stay consistent in your width and then as you're sewing along you may come off the back edge as you're stitching in the ditch. So if you can use this product and keep a very consistent width on the back then by all means go for it. Um, it works really well. Um, it's, a good, it's a good way to do things. So what I'm going to show you today is hand binding. Um, now for me, I will be honest, hand binding is a bad name. I do not like binding by hand. I don't like sewing by hand. It is not my thing. I'm all for fast and furious. But um, that's okay. Um, we all need to learn hand binding just so we have the skill. So I've got a couple of different things I've placed on the quilt that um, come in handy. The first is if you're doing a light colored back, um, obviously with a quilt that's charcoal, you're not gonna use white thread, but this is a product from ULI Quilting, and what this is, is um, thread specifically designed for hand quilting. And this thread has got um, a wax already built into it. So it's thread that's kind of been dipped in a wax, basically. Um, and it's a beeswax, so that way it doesn't tangle. If you just use your thread regular, regularly that's not been treated, um, a lot of times you end up with knots and tangles and it's very frustrated. frustrating. Um, the other, this is regular thread that we're gonna use today and we're just gonna use Orofil thread and what I'm gonna do is just cut a little bit off. Let me find my scissors. Just for demonstration purposes today. Okay, so I've cut my 
or fill thread and you can see it blends in so well it's hard for me to find it. And what I did is I ordered this off of Amazon. Again, Amazon is my friend. This has got slots for thread and it's just beeswax. So basically what I do is just put this little thread in here and just kind of wrap it around and pull it through and it kind of coats your thread with beeswax. And that's all you're wanting to do is just coat your thread. Um, that will probably last my lifetime. And then, let's see, this is a wonderful little gadget a friend of mine gave me. It's a pen cushion and a lipstick tube. Um, love it, not sure where she picked it up, but I think it's adorable. So, you know, you're just gonna pick a needle that um, you can see, hopefully, how to thread it. If you can't see through to thread it, no worries. We have a needle threader. So again, um, you know, just take your needle, set it in the threader, you just put your thread down in there, get it good and secure, and then just press the button and pull it up, and voila, it's threaded, just like so. So that makes it real handy. It's a nice little gadget. Um, if you have poor eyesight like I do, um, it's worth the five bucks. So we're just gonna make a little knot, um, no fancy knot, you know, just twist it around a couple of times, just so you don't have it untangle. Now the last little product I'm going to show you, we're gonna trim the tail here, uh, is these clips. These are wonder clips. Um, <laughs> if you ever use them, then you start to wonder why you never had them before in your life. Okay, so you just kind of come along, and what's great about these is they have little guides on the back so you can kind of see where your your lines are, and one of them is a quarter of an inch, so that way you can kind of just know where you need to be. And so I'm just gonna work my way into this corner and show you how I do a corner, and then um, show you a little bit on the other side, and then you can take it from there. So on the corner, you're gonna tuck in and fold over. So this way, the fold on the back is going this direction, the fold on the front is going the other direction. And then make a nice 45 to where they meet. And just take a little clippy, clip that little dude on there, and then just go around to the other side. And put another little clippy back here. And that'll be enough of a demonstration to get you going. Uh, this is my thimble. This is a leather thimble. It's just a preference. There are all kinds of thimbles on the market. Um, but that's the, th the thimble that I like to use, is a leather thimble. It just fits my finger well. I have small fingers. So the way I start this is I kind of go in from behind, as you can see here, and I just kind of pull this needle up through the back. And we're not going through to the front of the quilt, we're just staying in this groove, okay? And I'm gonna move my first clip, and then what we'll do is make sure we get this folded over and it stays. We're going through the fold of the binding. So we're taking just a little tiny bite into the fold of the binding, and you know, really small. We don't wanna see our stitches. And so we come up through the binding, make sure that's secured. And then we just come over and just keep it. You know, if you can feel the needle on the front side, you want to keep your finger where the needle is because if you feel that needle on the front side, you've gone in too far. And so then you just come up and you're staying right in that fold. Okay, and you can start to see it starts to tack down. And that's really all we're doing is we're just tacking down that binding um, and we want it to be tiny stitches right in the fold so that way it's not really visible, okay? That's the goal, is to not have really visible uh, hand stitches. You want them to be as little, little seen as possible. Um, you want them to be able to take off their glasses and put some magnifying glasses on them to find your stitches. And so we just keep working our way around to do this. This is a lovely thing to do at night when you're sitting and watching TV, especially in front of a fireplace. Um, you know, in a good movie, um, just to be really relaxed and just working through and doing some hand stitching. Um, a lot of people find it very soothing and methodically. Um, I, I'm not one of those. Um, I would prefer to go fast and furious on my sewing machine. 
So I tend to do most of my binding by machine um, for stuff that I bind. Uh, if I want it hand bound, I usually send it to a friend of mine who enjoys doing it. But that's uh, just my own personal preference. And so we're going to come across and we're almost to this corner, this very first corner. And I'm just going to show you real quick how I do that turn. And then I think you'll be off to the races, as they say. Okay. So here we are. We're up at the corner. And so what we're going to do, take our little clip off. And you can see from the clip staying there for a little bit, it's made a bit of a crease, kind of like a finger press. So we're just going to come in and be sure not to go too far. Pull, pick up a couple of these, do a couple of stitches into the corner. And then once we've kind of got into the corner a bit, we're going to come up and then lay this corner over. And then let's get it all back lined up. And then we're going to come this direction and do a couple this way. Be careful not to stab yourself in the thumb. Ask me how I know that. Because, my dears, I have done that. Okay, and just to get a couple in here, like so. And one more. And kind of once you work your way back down that 45, you're ready to just kind of keep going. It's the same process as before where you just pick up a little bit and keep going. And you can see we've got a nice turned corner there. And you just do, just keep on down the next, down the next side of your quilt. And like I said, it's a great little thing to do, especially in the evening, watching television with your family. Um, it can be pretty uh, relaxing for those who enjoy it. So with that, I want to conclude today's tip with Cottage Grove Quilt Company. Um, you've now been walked through the steps that I use for binding, so good luck. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section or reach out to us via email or Facebook. Thank you. Good day.